Alright, welcome to Camp Lagoon. We've got Rotten here in the yellow. As the Norse at the top of the map. And at the lower part of the map, we've got Smiga in the red, also as the Norse. So, got a mirror match today. I don't think we've had mirrors yet. Oh no, we have. We had a Roman mirror earlier with uh, Rotten versus Tempires. But otherwise, we've had Persia versus Norse and Persia versus Greeks. So, we have Norse versus Norse mirror here. There's water over on this right side of the map. That's what we'll have just seen. In the center of the map, you've got to be a bit careful here because there are these soldiers here, these legionaries and centurions. So you don't want to run into those if you can help it. Rotten, no! Rotten! Rotten! No! So he loses his scout. I don't think he even realizes just yet. He's still got his other one here. So the beauty of being Norse is he does get a mulligan in that sense, but at the same time it does hurt to lose the scout. Especially if you're Norse and you were going to use him to build your barracks. It looks like Levo's just going on the uh, storehouse though. But Smig is going for the early barracks. And I think he's seen this central army here, so he's aware he needs to be careful of the neutral creeps. He's already... Well, Levo's the one that's actually played a game... Well, they both have played a game on a map with neutral creeps, so you've got to be careful of that. Um, Camp Lagoon, Bandit Hideout, and Hill Fort. There is some form of neutral, or some form of chaos, or creep soldiers to try and actually avoid, and eventually kill. Smeager's Spear Rush here will be, uh, having to be very careful of that. Because the Legionaries as well, they've got their ranged attack and that does snare, so you don't want to eat too much damage from that, or any damage from it. But this is great for Smeager. If he gets the third Spearman across here, he can really push and ruin Rotten's day, force him to try and have to go for a counter barracks, or really just delay an early uh, age up and second TC. So Rotten evacuates pretty quickly there. It's quite safe to go to age three here. He just needs to uh, age two, so he just needs to get a little bit more wood. Um, but he's got plenty of population space here. He's already got that longhouse finished. Um, he may want to get pickers gloves, but he may want to just get the upgrade for age up in queue first, and then get pickers gloves. Let's work on uh, getting that second TC. Or even cutting the stone, getting a barracks, and trying to defend here. Because Smeag is going to keep applying pressure for the time being. He's run out of gold for spears, but he's gathering some more now. So he is going to keep producing spears by the looks of things. Or at least get some gold so he can get hunting dogs or uh, handsaw once he ages up. Because they're going to eat a little bit of gold up as well. So right now, Smeag is just making sure Lebo can't gather from any hunt. He's got a scout on each of these other hunts. He's got the spears parked at this close hunt. He's just saying, come on, try it again. Let's show me what you got. Rotten, on the other hand, is just distance gathering wood. So he could actually move back to this storehouse for the time being if he wanted to. He's not far off getting that TC. He's got his spears. I mean, he's got his villagers still in queue. He's got handsaw on the way. So, right now, Rotten's doing everything right. He, if anything, really all he's lacking is picker's gloves. But at the moment, it looks like he's more fixated on making sure he gets a town center in a good spot. Which is probably wise for him to do so. Might overgather a little bit on food there, but... No, that's a... He's smart to use the food gatherers to produce, make the town center rather than keep gathering food because he'd overgather. So he's going to go back on the uh, wood line now. He probably wants to get picker's gloves as soon as he can. Smeager. He's done a little bit of damage in the sense that he's delayed the hunt gathering. You know, it does cost you a bit. You know, hunts are quite a fair bit quicker than berries. 
particularly with your opponent, like Rotten, is invested in hunting dogs early. So that eats up a fair bit of wood and a little bit of gold too. The Smeager's TC will be a bit slower than his opponent's, but he does have the benefit of being able to get it anywhere on the map he wants, pretty much, at this stage. So it could make it a bit easier to defend the water here and try and keep Rotten away from the water. Because if you can start water economy as well as your second TC, like if you're on even TCs and you've got water, you're generally going to pull, uh, pull out ahead economically. Just because you've got the potential to make those fishing boats, but they do gather a little bit quicker than a villager. They only take up one population like a villager. They're a bit more expensive, but they're definitely worth it. So Smeag has not really found any opportunity to go in here. Although this is this is a good idea. It really forces Lebo to have to start gathering wood up the back. But it looks like Lebo's aware. Yeah, Lebo. Able to see the uh, tower go there. So it makes it really hard for Lebo to actually gather along the front here. Smeag can eventually creep towards the uh, gold around either side of this uh, wood line too. And then it starts to get quite tough for Rotten, because if Smeager manages to get a tower over here and tower up this side, Rotten's eventually going to run out of gold. And as good as throwing Axemen are at fighting other infantry, they're useless at fighting towers. They're, one of the, they're probably the worst counter-infantry under towers. So that's why, even though Norse are famous for sort of being able to tower... And push with that. They're also one of the worst hits for trying to break that kind of hold. Because these guys, very little damage to buildings. They do have... I was going to say they do have pierce armor, but no, they actually don't. They do have a nice counter to ranged and to infantry. But they're not even a proper range counter. So right now Smeag is just adding barracks. He doesn't really want to add any uh, stables so far. Actually, no, never mind. I take that back. He has added a stables. It's a good idea. Because these guys, again, other than against infantry, they're not a great source of damage. They are okay against bowmen, but bowmen do out damage them, obviously. Because what these guys deal with bonus damage, bowmen deal as flat damage and then have a bonus on top of that against infantry. So Rotten will be adding a third stable, uh, third barracks, but he probably does want to get a stables of his own. Because then he doesn't have to worry about adding too many spears. He's got something to take down the guard towers. He's got something to eat up damage from the throwing axemen. Smeager. Population cap for the moment, but not for much longer. He's got the dock, so he's going to be able to start fishing 38 villages to 42 in favour of Rotten. So... Rotten's eco is really, really good. His ability to just make sure he's not housed and to keep things being produced. Lebo is a great player for his just general macro fundamentals. And he always tends to produce quite solid armies. He probably will look at adding a stables next, I'd say. Especially because he's seen that Smeager does have uh, raiders of his own. So rather than just having to add spears, he can keep making TAs if he gets his own raiders. I'm just going to try and clean up the tower because he hasn't seen the army, but I'm thinking it's probably busy. He's going to try and take out the tower. But he's going to have to disengage here, I think. The tower is focusing down the barracks. It's not focusing down the army here. So a few throwing axemen getting picked off there. And Lebo's going to start adding spears. He's not added a stables of his own yet. Which is a little surprising because Smiga... He does only have one stables but he's been, been non-stop producing out of it. But this is going to give him the ability to try and raid. 
You just be that little bit more responsive. There's a lot of villagers exposed at the back there. It'll take a while for the throwing axemen to get to them, and there's just not enough spears to deal with them alone. They'll be able to repair the barracks. That's me adding another tower. Maybe we're going to try and wall himself in because he's got a fair bit of resources he can protect here. And now that he walls this in, it protects the gold and the berries from any sort of towering. This will be a nice catch here for uh, Smeager. Although he probably would have wanted to go in on the hunt, actually, because if he can slow down all this big wood line, if he can slow down all this, this will be immense. So... Rotten trying to push in the meanwhile, because he knows Smeager doesn't have that front line. At the same time, has he got enough to be able to just keep pushing Smeager well outside of the, TC, uh, the tower fire? Because in the meanwhile, Smeager is getting this big raid off, and he will keep killing a couple of villagers. Rotten is forced to have to retreat here, but he does have a bigger population overall. And a few... Spears able to ward off the raiders. 60 villagers to 64. So look, Rotten's still in the lead with uh, Eco here. Smeager. Double fishing ship production at the moment. So, yet he's uh, still not got a huge amount of food in the bank. He's actually got more wood and more gold. Oh, sorry, that's Rotten I'm talking about. But Smeager... Not a lot of food in the bank for him. Rotten, plenty of gathering going on on the land here. He has got a little bit more villages at the moment, but Smeager, that fishing eco is really going to start paying off because he now has seven boats. A range being added now, which is a bit interesting because I don't know if he's going to really be able to use it until he gets to age three, so he'll be looking to age up here, I'd say. Because he would want to get bowmen. I don't know if he really wants to get uh, skirmishes. Probably want to avoid it if he can. I don't know. He's going to start adding skirms. It's just they don't deal a huge amount of damage. They do have that great range, but even still, you need to get a lot of them for them to really be effective. So another stables here. Rotten getting temper, which is a really good upgrade to have. Smeega getting double armory behind this. So, he'll be later on the upgrades, but I think he'll be able to afford double upgrade production a little bit easier than Rotten. Just because he does have that fishing eco, so... And he does have the eco tech for it. So, I think he'll be a bit easier for Smeager. He does have plenty of stone in the bank as well. A bit, bit easier for him to actually gather uh, what he needs for double armory production. And making sure he's uh, not down on army. But this will be a nice catch here for Lebo. He'll get a fair bit of damage done to those raiders. So Norse doesn't have early game healing. So even if he only kills one or two, a lot of these guys are really low now. So Smeager's front line. Taking a bit of a battering there. But Lebo needs to get these guys back to work. Even if they're just gathering wood. Because he will eventually need to start getting farms here. Smeager... Scale mail and temper in production. Shield rim for Lebo, which be handy under the tower, but he really needs to get scale mail as well, which he's got in the queue. So upgrades are going to be pretty even, I think. Shield rim's going to kick in before either of Smeager's upgrades. No, I see why he got uh, shield rim. Another range here for Smeager. He wants to be able to get a lot of bowmen out. A couple of skirmishes. They're not going to deal a huge amount of damage, but at least they do have that little bit of extra range. The uh, throwing axemen don't seem to be getting anywhere there. Ebo's got a few idlers. He needs to make sure he's just gathering whatever he can at this point. If he wants to try and break this hold, because Smeager, throwing Axeman champion, shield rim on the way. Even was looking to add a couple of bowmen there.
Lebo having all of his uh, age 2 upgrades that he needs at the moment though. No need for uh, range damage at this point, so he's got all of his upgrades he needs. Smeagol getting shield rim, but it's not really of any effect. He's actually got the upgrades he also needs at this point in time. Doesn't really have the bowman to worry about range damage. Fighting on the towers, I think this might ultimately go Smeagol's way here because he does have the bonus of these towers. They're going to be able to hit really hard against all the throwing axemen. Make it hard for Rotten to actually disengage here. Rotten having to invest in farms in the meanwhile. He needs to get more upgrades. He needs play iron pickaxe. Because, oh, he desperately needs to get pickaxe because the conservation is going to really help. Smeagol's cut him off from a lot of gold, though. So I don't know where Rotten's going to keep gathering gold from. He's going to have to try and work his way over to here and establish a market at some point. Smeagol going for the forward fortress here whatever reason he's not actually started it yet that was weird we get the skirmishes off it there we go so there was constantly skirmishes and then throwing axemen actually standing on where he was hoping to place that but now that he's started it'll bring Lebo forward. He's going to want to try and interrupt it first, which will cost him time actually attacking the army. Which, even though Smeagol doesn't finish it, he can actually start it again. He can afford to do so, so it means he can just keep on relying on that. Throwing Axeman Champion, he's got a little bit of extra range. Or is it extra just attack speed and damage now? It used to be extra range. Oh, Lebo's has kicked in now anyway. But it looks like Smiga has thinned out Lebo's army enough that he can just sit on top of the production. Maybe look at going for that fortress again. Lebo desperately trying to produce throwing axemen, but now with horsemen on the front line, these are even tankier than the raiders, so having them there in the face of those throwing axemen is quite tough. There's even a lot of bowmen now at the back for Smiga, so again, it's really tough for... Lebo to actually engage. He started getting Bowman of his own, but I'm just getting picked off as soon as they finish training. In these sorts of situations, having them rallied somewhere is a bad idea. You should probably want them to rally as short as possible just to actually start taking the fight, or just rally them away. Then running in like that gets them just cleaned up free, unfortunately for Lebo. Smeagol preventing this tower from going up. There's not a lot left for Lebo. More barracks. The Smeagol being built over there at the left, just for more map control. 92 villages to 76. GG. Rotten is going to call it quits there. And Smeagol takes the game.